Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin here from Wibbit.net, here for another Wibisode. And in this installment, what we're going to do is something that I think is actually pretty fun. We're going to be building our own certificate authority, and uh, we're going to be signing a uh, certificate request for a web server and showing basically from a simple, very simple example how that works. Now, what is my motivation for doing this? Well, just in case we ever have to rebuild the internet from scratch, this information is in in your brain. We just never know how things are gonna go. We may have to rebuild our own internet and our own image. And this information is nice to have out there. Now it already might be out there and I don't do my research and that's fine, but I'm putting it out there with my own spin on it just because that's how I like to do things. So here's what I have so far. I have built two servers. I have two Ubuntu servers. I have a server that's going to act as my root CA, which is just going to be my certificate authority, and then a server that's just going to be a web server. So these are two completely different servers, and then of course you can see that I have a Windows 10 machine right here, just a Windows machine, that I'm going to be using just as my base to co connect to the other servers as well as um, interact with the web server once I have that up and running. I'm going to unpin a couple of these because I don't need that. That's annoying. All right. The first thing I want to do is build my certificate authority. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to go to my root of my machine here and I'm just going to create, I'm going to first elevate to sudo su. Uh, I've already done that. So it may ask you for your password if you haven't done that. And I'm going to create a directory called CA. Now, most, you know, pretty much everyone that shows you how to do this is going to show you their own way. I'm just showing you a simple way that I do it for this example here. And I'm going to create a directory called CA. And then I'm going to go into that directory. And then in that directory, I'm going to make a directory called CA. And I'm going to change the privileges to 700. So now if I do an ls-l, you can see the directory permissions. Let's clear that screen. Now what I want to do is create a private key for my certificate authority. So I'm going to use OpenSSL and I'm going to generate a, say, a private key certificate. And I'm just going to call it root-ca.key and make it 2048 bits. So let's run that. Then it's going to ask me to create a passphrase for my key. So I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to just call it password Obviously, you're going to want to make it something that's extremely complicated for someone to guess. And then once I've created my private key, now remember, your private key is something that you don't want anybody to ever have access to. So this is completely hidden behind the curtain. Now what I want to do is create a public key. Uh, actually... Let me let me erase what I just pasted. Um, I need to uh, put a configuration file in here, which I will make available on the website. So if you check the link below, I will have uh, I'll give you access to that. So let me do nano. Probably should have done this in an earlier step, but I forgot to do it. There is um several things that uh, it's just eh, this is all kind of messy here. But there's uh several configuration items that it's just not really worth going over a lot of this stuff in a sort of basic tutorial. You know, I don't want to spend an hour on this, but I'm just going to put this here and at your at your own leisure, I would encourage you to go over some of the items in this file. I'm going to fix this up. Okay. Those people who know me know that I'm a uh, pretty strict person when it comes to syntax formatting. So when I say see things that are out of alignment. It's kind of a little bit of a pet peeve of mine. So you could see just a couple of basic items in here. I'd say control O and enter to save it. This shows us dash CA dash root is where our CA stuff is. And here's a couple of things that we're going to be adding. So don't really pay too much attention to this. A couple of things just to kind of keep in mind is we're going to be using SHA-256 because SHA-1 and MD5 are, you know, we don't really use those anymore. Control X to get out of here. So now I'm going to get back to where I just was a second ago, which is to create a public certificate for my CA. And I'm going to be using that uh, configuration file, some items in that configuration file to create that. So hopefully I wasn't too confusing about that. Uh, and it's not too important to know what's in that configuration file. Uh, I guess it sort of is if you're going to be creating your own, but you can always go through it and see it. It's not like it's rocket science or anything. So I'm going to be uh, requesting a certificate using that, uh, that configuration file. And I'm just making this certificate available for a lot of days just because it's fun. Why not? And uh, the private key that I'm going to be using is that private key that I created in the prior step up here. And I'm going to be spinning out the result to this file here. So let's run this asking me for the password to my private key, which I'm going to do 
password. All right, so now it's asking me some information about me, the certificate authority. So remember now, I'm not the business asking for a certificate. So let's pretend like I'm GoDaddy or if I'm Google. So just for a little bit of context before we continue, if you uh, do MMC for Windows here and you do uh, add snap-in, add certificates, computer account, local computer, You will see under, let me just make this big here. You will see a section here called uh, Trusted Root Certificate Authorities. And then here, these are Trusted Root Certificate Authorities out there on the internet. So certificates that are signed by these CAs are trusted by your computer. So you'll see things like uh, DigiCert. You'll see things like GoDaddy, Microsoft. You'll notice that uh, Wibbit.net is in here, but you will see things like VeriSign. Oh, it's unfortunate that Wibbit.net is not in here. We need to fix that. We're, we're going to make ourselves a trusted root certificate. So one of these days, we're going to have Wibbit.net as a trusted certificate root authority. One of these days. But until that day comes, we're going to force our way in here manually. But we'll we'll get to that, that part in just a little bit. So it's going to ask for our uh, country name. It wants two letters. So I'm going to say United States. Uh, let's say uh, the state in the United States. Let's just say uh, Washington. And then the uh, city, we'll say DC. I think those should be flipped. Oh, wow. Organization. We'll say Wibbit.net uh, Certificate LLC. Why not? And then second organization a name. Ah, eh, we'll just leave that blank. Organizational unit. We'll say Certificate Authorization. Now, I'm probably going to have spelling mistakes because, you know, talking and typing <laughs> increases your chances of... <laughs> <laughs> having a spelling mistake. Okay, now the common name is actually when you import your certificate is what's going to show up in here. So I'm going to I'm going to say wibbit.net certificate authority. I can't uh wibbit.net certificate authority and it's going to say uh, email address admin at wibbit.net. Boom. Okay, so we have that. So let's actually take a look at what that certificate looks like by running this command here. Open uh, SSL x509 dash no out text in and then the certificate that we want to look at. All right, so this is some information about that certificate that we just created. So you'll see that it is a, uh, a version three certificate. Here's the serial number, uh, the issuer from the United States, Washington, DC, Wibbit.net certificate, LLC. I don't know, I probably could have done a better job with the name, but whatever, who cares, just the test. There is no second organization. The OU is uh, certificate authorization. And let's see, validity, those are the dates, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so fun times, the common name, Wibbit.net certificate authority email address. All right, so you kind of you get the idea so this is information about the certificate all right so now i want to create a little bit of structure around my certificate authority now some people have like Perl scripts and shell scripts that do all this for you but i kind of like to do it the manual way so you know what you're doing i'm going to create a directory inside of my root ca folder called uh, cadb.certs this is arbitrary and uh just so that you know how arbitrary this is let me um nano the config file we actually set the name of these directories here so you can see that the default CA is CA default. Here's the CA default configuration. So here is the uh, the directory is here. Here's the variable directory. So the certs are going to be stored here, index here, blah, 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 blah. So you can see these directories are kind of arbitrary. So you can make them whatever you want. I'm just using a uh, naming standard that... I use when I do, you know, test certificate authorities for some test projects that I do. So I'm going to make a directory called uh, CADB certs. And then once I do that, I am going to change the permission to 700. So chmod 700 for that directory. And the next thing I'm going to do is create a file called ca.db.serial because we're like super serial. I know I'm not funny. And then we'll do chmod 700 for that file and in that serial file that's going to keep track of the serial numbers for our file so it's just going to be an incrementing number so what i'm going to do is echo the number one out to that file so echo one to that file so if i cat this file i will see that that file now contains the text zero one next i'm going to touch another file called ca.db.index and i'm going to also provide that file with a permission of 700 
700. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a random file with the same permissions of 700. Now with this one, we're going to do a little bit of a neat trick. And uh, with a, uh, a base install of Ubuntu, it should have Perl on it. If not, you can just look up how to install Perl. But I'm just going to execute Perl from the command line by doing Perl-E. And then inside of single quotation marks, I'm going to do print the integer value of the, a random number between 90 and 10 and then spit that value out to ran. So if I cat this, we're basically just spitting out a random number. So in this case, you could see that it is 45. So we have a randomized number to a file. So at this point, we have a functional certificate authority. All right, now what I wanna do is hop over to a web server so that we can actually do something with this certificate authority because right now it's just sitting here doing nothing. Actually, I lied. There's one other thing that I wanna add to this certificate authority. So I'm going to um, nano a file called v3.ext and this is going to act as the base for v3 certificates and you're going to see this um, implemented in a little bit. We're going to make copies of this for when we satisfy CSR requests or certificates, you know, certificate requests from clients. CSR stands for Certificate Signing Request, which is one of the main purposes that a certificate authority does is we would get a request from somebody that wants us to say that we trust them so that they can be trusted somewhere else. We're acting as a third party trust. If somebody trusts us, then they can trust that entity. That's functionally what we're trying to accomplish here. So we are going to be using a combination of these two configuration files. And this configuration file, I'm actually going to be making a copy of it for us for multiple domain certificates. I know I'm kind of getting a little bit wordy, but you're going to see how that functions in a second. So now I'm going to build a simple web server over here, because right now this, this is actually not a web server. It doesn't do anything. And I'm just going to use Apache because Apache is, I, I know that there's a lot of, um, well, let me do a sudo su. Apache, I feel, is uh, pretty simple to work with, although I know that some of you may find other ones easier to work with, and that's perfectly fine. But for the purposes of this, if you just want to follow this tutorial, uh, I recommend that you would just use Apache and then uh, take this knowledge to other web applications, like if you wanted to use IIS or something else. Uh, then I'm going to install PHP. Why not? Just because... It's, uh, it's fun. All right, let that install. All right, uh, I'll just go ahead and I'll clear the screen. I'm going to add the rewrite module to Apache. Then I'm going to add the SSL module to Apache. Cool. Okay, once I have those two things, I want to run over to where CD, uh, ETC, Apache 2, sites available. And I'm going to do an LS. Then I want to, I'm going to do a nano and I'm going to, Edit the triple uh, zero default config file. Whoops, did I not do it right? Oh, <laughs> I didn't actually edit the file. And I'm just gonna hold Control and hold K just to blitz everything in that file. And I'm just gonna replace this with a uh, pretty standard script that just says, you know, you, you send me a request and I'm gonna do a rewrite to HTTPS so that I won't allow any connections on HTTP. Now I'm going to do a nano on the default ssl.conf. Hold control, hold K, and delete everything. Now uh, the default directory where, and I'll just do another connection to that web server, should be cd slash var slash triple w. There should be a directory in here called HTML. and this is where your htdocs directory is gonna be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paste a simple, just, this really doesn't do much. It just sets the document root to that location. It sets my certificate file in a uh, directory, which I will create in just a second. This is just the location that I like to store my Apache SSL files. Matter of fact, let me just run over to this tab, just create that directory. There we go. Oops. That way that's already done and over with. And uh, that'll be the certificate file. This will be the private key file. We will be writing our logs here, error log here, access log here. And then we're just setting some permissions for the document root file. Uh, no indexes. Uh, so we're just setting rewrite SSL options. Control O, enter, Control X. Okay. And if you guys have followed like the LAMP tutorial and things like that, you guys have already seen me 
do this so it's not like you guys haven't seen this before. And I think most of this is our, is pretty much almost exactly the same. So let me enable the default SSL site. And uh, right now, uh, we don't have any certificates set up. So let me just copy this directory path and run over to that directory. I'm going to close this tab just to limit confusion. Okay, so in here, whoops, let me click in here. In here, I have absolutely nothing. But what I want to do is create a private key. So very similar to like what I did on the certificate authority server, I'm going to generate a private key. I'm just going to call it apache.key, make it uh, 2048 bits. And let's also just make the, pa actually, instead of making the password password, just so that when I say it, we know the difference, I'll call the password apache. Apache. All right. So now if I do an ls, I have a apache.key file. So now, instead of creating a uh, certificate file with my key file, what I want to do is I am Wibbit Incorporated, okay? This is Wibbit.net. Even though they have similar names, uh, we're different businesses. But what I want to do is I want to go to the Wibbit.net uh, certificate authority and say, hi, I, I would like to do business with you. And again, pretend like it's GoDaddy or something. I want to do business with you. And I would like you to uh, sign my certificate uh, request so that I can do trusted business on the internet. In order for me to do that, first I have to have some kind of established trust so that they know who I am, I know who they are, and I'm going to send them a CSR, a certificate signing request. But I have to create a certificate signing request first. So here's how I'm gonna do that. Open SSL, actually, let me, uh, let me clear the screen. I'm gonna do open SSL request. The key file that I'm gonna use is apache.key. I'm gonna create a new signing request using SHA-256 and I'm gonna spit out the request into apache.csr. All right, so I run that. And it's gonna ask me for the password for my key, which is Apache, run that. And now it's gonna ask me some information. Now I'm just using a, uh, this one is not using a configuration file, like the server's using, it's using a default configuration file that comes with OpenSSL. Of course you could build your own configuration file if you wanted to, but I'm going to say that I am from the United States. Let's say my I am from Maryland and I am from Baltimore and my organization is Wibbit Incorporated and my organizational unit Unit is let's just say software engineering I don't know this is kind of arbitrary information right now the common name now um, in this case I want my common name ideally to be the server name now you're gonna see in a second that um, the server certificate authority is going to be uh, adding additional DNS entries but I'm going to say I am Wibbit dot INC, that'll be the server name that I'm requesting. And we'll say that uh, the email address is admin at wibbits.inc. All right, it's gonna ask me, do you wanna have a challenge password? No, optional, no. Okay, now one of the things that's kind of interesting here is that this would be like a server name, and a lot of times older browsers will only validate this name to see if the certificate is valid, but we know that a lot of times you can have wibbit.inc or www.wibbit.inc. Some companies will also request multiple DNS entries for one certificate. So you could have wibbit.inc, wibbitincorporated.inc, and then multiple DNS entries for one certificate. And if the certificate authority approves of that, you can have m many entries for one certificate. That's perfectly legitimate nowadays. Uh, maybe at one point it wasn't. Uh, you know, some people can do wildcard certificates like star.wibbit.inc. In this case, we're not doing that. So you'll see what we're doing here in just a sec. So right now I'm just doing wibbit.inc. So now here we go. I have a CSR. So let me do cat this. Okay. Here's my certificate request. Now what I would do is submit this to whoever I'm trying to get this signed by. In this case, it's just easy for me to just copy and paste this text. Maybe you would email it through a secure email or something like that. In this case, it's just easy for me to copy it and paste it over here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to do a nano and I'll do uh, wibbit.inc.csr and I'll paste that here. All right. So that's what I have here. Now, one of the things that I know as the uh, certificate authority is we've talked about, me and the client have talked about the DNS entries that they want the CSR to be associated with. We know that they want wibbit.inc, but maybe they want www.wibbit.inc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my v3.ext to wibbits.inc. I'm sorry, let, let, let me just make this easier. I'll do v3 underscore wibbits dot inc dot ext. All right, and then let me nano that. 
Okay, so this has a couple of pieces of configuration information, and that rhymes. <laughs> and I'm going to add a field in here called alt names. And this can have pretty much as many DNS entries as you want. But what I'm going to do for this example is just two. Alt names, DNS.1, Wibbit.inc, DNS.2, www.wibbit.inc. And here, and I know you're going to see in a second, I mean, I'm not doing a full reveal. This is intended for you to watch the whole thing. And I'm also going to set a variable heal that heal here, that subject alt name equals, and then the variable at alt underscore names, which is what this is right here. So I'm setting the alternative subject name to be these values right here. So older browsers would validate against the subject name that I put in when I created the CSR, and then more modern browsers will be using whatever all of these are. So let me save this and exit out. So now what I want to do is I already know who these people are. I got their CSR. I can validate their CSR by typing in open SSL req dash in, and then it's uh, wibbit.inc.csr dash no out dash text. Oops. And this gives me information about the CSR. So if I wanted to take a look at it, I could see who it's coming from. Wibbit, .incor Wibbit Incorporated Software Engineering, Wibbit Incorporated, admin at Wibbit.net. So I can see some information here about the CSR. So let me clear it and let me do an LS again. All right, so here is some information. All right, so now what I want to do is go through the process of signing this. All right, so here's the command that I'm going to run. Open SSL. CA, the configuration file that I'm going to use, which is the one that we set up earlier, how many days that the certificate's going to be valid for, which is 365 days in this case. This is usually pretty common just to be good for a year. The in file that I'm going to be using is the CSR file that I got from my client. In this case, I saved it locally as wibbit.inc.csr. However, on my client side, it's known as apache.csr. And the EXT file that I'm using is that V3 Wibbit Incorporated EXT file, which has those additional DNS entries in them. The output is going to be wibbit.inc.crt. So let's run this. Now it's asking me for the password for my key, which is password. Okay, now it's giving me some details about the CSR. So it's telling me that the serial number is one, which means in this case, it's the very first certificate that I've issued. So obviously the next certificate that I issue is gonna be two. And here's obviously the, the information that we looked at before when we checked it out. It's uh, version three, which is what we wanted, which is what this extension's helping us out with. And uh, yeah, all kinds of cool stuff. Here is another very important thing that we mentioned, which are those alternative DNS names. Do you wanna sign this certificate? Yes, I do. And then it's says, uh, yeah, are you sure you want to commit to this? The answer is, sure, why not? So now if I do an LS, I have this certificate right here. So if I do a cat this, you'll see that I have this certificate along with uh, some additional information. But one of the things too that I want to direct your attention to is if I go to CD, then the root CA, and then I go to that CA.db.certs, you'll see in here that there is a 01.pem file. And if I cat this, you'll notice that I have my own copy of this certificate here. So my certificate authority is going to store a copy of the uh, certificates that it does issue to its client. So I don't need to keep this certificate around if I don't want to. So I'm gonna I'm gonna end up deleting these three files. You can keep your CSRs. I usually, if I were to do something like this, I would keep my CSRs and maybe timestamp them. Uh, the information that's the most important, you don't, you you can send the whole file over and typically you would, but for this example, just because I don't feel like dragging all this around and copying everything, this begin and end certificate is what I'm going to copy. But what I would do is I would send this file back over to the client that sent this to me and say, here is the certificate issued by the certificate authority. So here over at my client, I'm going to go nano, and then I'm going to do apache.crt, and I'll paste this data in here. Open, control O, control X. Now, if I do an LS, I have a CRT, a CSR, and a key file. I don't actually have to keep the CSR file anymore because the CSR file has fulfilled its purpose. So now if I do a service Apache to restart, let's see, it wants my password, which was Apache. I actually should have a functioning server. So this is the IP address. Let's see what happens. If I put the IP address in, I'm getting a certificate error, which is fine. And that works. So let's uh, let's examine the certificate that we get back. So the certificate issued to Wibbit Incorporated by Wibbit.net Certificate Authority. And then if I go to the details and I scroll down 
The subject is the stuff that we put in. Wibbit Incorporated, blah, blah, blah. If I scroll down a little bit further, I should see alternative subject name. Wibbit Incorporated and uh, www.wibbit.incorporated or wibbit.inc. Now, what you'll notice that we are getting a certificate error. Now, the reason we're getting a certificate error is because we're connecting by IP address and not host name. So let's see if we can fix that. So if I go here and I type in notepad and I run this as administrator and I go to file open and uh, C colon backslash windows and then I go to system 32 drivers and then ETC and here there's a file called hosts and then if I add in an entry to my host file it's uh what was it all right psh, short term memory 14 all right so uh 1.14 so if I paste that in there and then I do uh wibbit.inc I'm also going to add another entry called uh, www. Now, uh, the, the next step in this process will be to create a DNS server and then uh, funnel our traffic through that. But that's a project for another day. So let's see if we can get this to work. Wibbit.inc. Oh, look at that. And we get no, we get no errors. Uh, connection is secure. Certificate valid. Look at that. Um... Let's see. Now we're actually we we didn't even have to add the certificate to our trusted uh, to our trust here. We should have had to do that. I'm not sure why it's uh, it's allowing that, but we're going to go ahead and do that anyway. Okay, we actually are getting. Okay, you see this little X right here. This is saying that uh, it, it can't verify the root. Okay, the root certificate is not trusted because it is not in the uh, root trust store. Okay, there we go. So um, we're, we're going to fix that. So from a uh, 50,000 foot level, we're saying that it's saying that the connection is secure because it's coming from a certificate authority and the host name does match the, uh, the name, but the root certificate is not valid. But so we're going to fix that real quick. All right. So www also works, but, uh, I have to close the browser, I think to fix that. So let's add that certificate to the trust store, which is this right here. So I got confused there for a second. All right. So I'm going to open up notepad. So to add the certificate to the trust store, all right, I'm back at my certificate authority. All right, so if I, I'm here in my CA directory, right? PWD slash CA. If I go to the root CA directory, here I have my root CA.crt. So let me cat that file. All I have to do is take the contents of this file. This is a this is public information, so it's not like this is hidden. The key files need to stay hidden. Guard that with your life. These don't. So I can paste this here. File. Save as. And I'll save this to my desktop. And I'll save this as Wibbit CA dot CRT. And I'll put quotes around it because this is Notepad. Let me save it. Okay. Close it and right click all tasks imports next browse to desktop which has wibbit ca next next finish okay wibbit.net certificate authority is in there and that's good until 2028 let's see wibbit incorporated we have a valid certificate still have an X on it, but the certificate is okay because it is not in the trusted, oh, it is in the trusted root certificate store. Trusted root certification authorities. I guess for f Okay, so uh, this, uh, I I'd never had this really happen before, but I just had to restart my computer and um, now it seems to be working fine. So you can see that my uh, certificate is in my trusted root certificate authorities. I refresh the web page. Everything looks fine. Connection is secure. Certificate valid. And now the little X is gone. And if I go to my certificate path, the little X is gone. I click on it and certificate is okay. I've never had to restart in computer before, but I don't know. Uh, maybe it's... I don't know, who knows? Maybe it's because I do most of this type of work on servers for Windows. I also don't usually do this kind of work in Windows. So I don't know. Maybe it's lack of Windows experience. But who knows? Those of you guys that are big into Windows can tell me that I'm a moron.
Hello, it's Kevin, speaking with British Robot Voice at 4am so I don't wake anyone up. After telling a friend about the issue I had with installing the certificate using the Microsoft Management Console, he recommend that I install it a different way. So, let's try that. First, I will delete the certificate from the trusted root certification authority store. There we go. Now I will close out of this. Next I will right click on my certificate authority set and click install certificate. Select local machine then next. Select place all certificates in the following store. Then select browse. Click on trusted root certification authorities and then click OK. Alright now click next. Finally click finish. Go back into the Microsoft Management Console and add the certificate snap in for the local machine and make sure you see the certificate that was just added. I have no idea why, but this worked better. F***ing Windows. But that's okay, it's working perfectly fine. So now all we have to do is get this certificate pushed out there, and then I will charge you all 20 million billion for billion dollars, and I will sign your, your certificates for you. I hope that you guys found some value in this webisode, and thank you so, so, so much for following along, and I will see you in the next webisode. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Uh -huh.